Hello and welcome to Enquire to Choir. My name is Eva and I'm here to help you, fellow choir people. In this video, we are going to talk about how to prepare your choir for a performance. I know maybe some of you are thinking, what is there to prepare for? What are you talking about? Because we practice the scores, we learn them, we practice them, and then we perform them. I thought like that before, and I realized you can have your scores practiced so much, but still have a very bad performance. There is something to be said about training for a performance because the psychology of a performance and the psychology of our rehearsals, those are very different things, very different psychologies. And I know you know that, but maybe if we expand this conversation, some things will become clearer and we can talk about the ways how to make things more efficient. I'm a strong believer that you can take your time and you should take your time on practicing the scores, learning the scores, perfecting them. But at a certain point of training for the performance, you have to start training for the performance because during the performance, the rules of the game are different and your choir has to get used to it. Recently, I heard Rafael Nadal, the tennis player, saying that the reason why Federer and him are who they are when it comes to tennis world is because they managed to win a lot of matches while playing bad tennis. I love this quote because it is actually true. They are trained for winning and they're trained to think in a way that makes them more capable to have a good performance than some other players that can translate even to choirs so i hope you stick around for this video and give me the chance to explain certain things i've learned during my career and certain points of view that i wish somebody mentioned to me before so let's start I think this sports analogy is a very convenient one. If you play a certain kind of sport and you're training for the Olympics, you probably know that you can train all your life. You can train to be an amazing player. You can win all the championships. You can win all the meetings. But then you come to the Olympics and then things don't go as planned. You have a setback. Your performance is not very good. The circumstances were not in your favor and everything or something falls apart. That is just a fact of life. And that is something we have to talk about when it comes to your choir performance. There are a lot of conversations when it comes to this across the digital media how to win how to be a boss how to fake it till you make it and stuff this all connected is intersected when it comes to the choir performance and i feel that it's my job it's my responsibility as a choir director to train my choir for the performance not just for the music but for the performance because the psychology of a performance is very different i know i don't always have the time to prepare to go through that process of training for the performance but still i could do it in a smaller scale still for every performance when i concepted this video and I thought about the things that make a performance different. I managed to come down to five things and we're going to expand on all of these five things. The first thing is the pressure. Obviously, singing under pressure is different. Pressure comes from a lot of places, even if the audience is very well intentioned. The thing number two is timing. Timing the performance or the timing of the performance is sometimes crucial. If you have a bad day, the performance can suffer. If you don't have tools, how to overcome you having a bad day in order to have a good performance. Thing number three, circumstances. Not every performance is created equally. Certain things can happen during the performance or before the performance and that can influence everything that happens during the performance. And connected to that is number four, how you deal with obstacles, how you deal with things that happen during the performance. That's different to every person in your choir. Your choir consists of people that are very different. We are all different, our mechanisms are different and that influences your choir. And number five is the will. 
as a singer that is performing, you can approach your will to have a good performance in a very different way. So these five things we're going to expand on right now. Let's start with the pressure. Of course, you realize there is pressure. I know you know that, but think of it this way. You have your rehearsals and during your rehearsals, you practice the scores. You want your choir to know the songs, to be able to perform them. You want them to start at the beginning and finish the song at the end without any major hiccups. My question to you is, if you say to your choir during the rehearsal, okay, let's start from the beginning and sing it all the way through. And during singing, something happens. You realize that something went wrongly. They fall apart. What do you do? you probably stop the singing and say, okay, okay, this is not working. Let's fix this or let's start again from the beginning and try again. Of course you do that. If something fell apart during the singing, of course you're going to try to fix it, to rehearse it, to practice it so that doesn't happen again. But if you do that every time, you teach your choir that they always have a second chance. Hear me out. So they don't succeed at performing a certain score. They got stuck at a certain place. Something falls apart and then they immediately stop and you give them the chance to try it again. But you can't do that during the performance. You can't repeat, you can't go back, you can't perfect it during the performance. And the psychology of not having that ability during the performance is something that makes the performance have a higher pressure. That is one of the main things that makes the performance stressful. This is the, where the stress comes from, not being able to repeat certain things. And if you make a mistake, you have to go on. The luxury during the rehearsals, they can always stop and try again, is something that can become a crutch for them during the performance. Because during the performance, they are not able to do that. They don't have that luxury. And not having that luxury, knowing that they can't stop, they just have to manage to sing all the way through, that becomes for them a condensed state, like the tools they have in their toolbox are taken. So one of the first things I would advise you during the rehearsal souls that at least sometimes before the performance at your final rehearsals before the performance you go through the whole song because you want to make them feel what it's like to go from the beginning to the very end without being able to stop and that comes from you the choir director when it comes to pressure, the thing I realized that makes the psychology of a performance really stressful is the silence. Hear me out. During the rehearsals, when you finish the song, when they finish singing a song all the way through, what happens? You usually say something as a choir director. You give them input. You comment on the performance. They comment uh, to each other what was difficult to them. And they have the luxury to have a reaction immediately. And there is no silence. But during the performance, when they perform the song, there is a silence and then there is the applause. But they're not able to communicate, they don't get the feedback when it comes to the choir director. They don't get to talk about it immediately after singing the song. They can't comment with their peers. And what they have to do is stand there and be silent. There is psychologically a very big difference when you are able to talk and when you are not able to talk. And during the performance, after you sing, it doesn't matter how much you want to say something you have to stand there and just keep silent because there is an audience and there is a protocol this silence also comes before the song so i as a choir director come in front of my choir 
I don't have the ability to talk to them, to instruct them with my words. I only stand in front of them. They're silent, waiting for my signs, and I'm not able to communicate with words. I just have to communicate with my hands and with my facial expressions. That is also very different than during the rehearsals. When you start singing something, before you start singing something at the rehearsal, you probably say, okay, let's try this again. You, this voice, try to do this, be careful of this one. Okay, let's start one, two, three, four. And when you're used to that and when the choir is used to that, that seems familiar, that is very comfortable, that is really relaxed. And then you come to performance and everything is like this. That is a very shocking thing to feel. And if you're not familiar with that feeling, that can put you in such a panic, especially when it comes to your singers. And of course, during the performance, there is an audience. The pressure coming from the audience, of course, is connected with the stage fright. Actually, there is a video here on the channel about how to handle your choir stage fright. I recommend you watch it. But when it comes to handling the stage fright and when it comes to handling the pressure coming from the audience, and the audience is very obviously not present during the rehearsal, if you instruct your choir members to just focus on you, but really focus on you during the rehearsals, then during the performances, the audience factor will not be as important. All of this connected, how to prepare your choir for that, because I've, I've talked about it so much right now that it all seems a bit, oh my God, it's such a different thing. What can I do? What I try to do if I have the time is to go through the repertoire in succession that will be sung at the performance like it is a performance so i make my choir members stand up arrive to the stage the improvised stage so we practice the entrance and if you don't know how to enter the stage you're not sure of the protocol there's a very old video about this here on the channel very very old okay so i make my choir members arrive to the stage I come in front of them without any words, I take a bow even, I look at them, I make them feel like they're in a performance. And if somebody is not cooperating and somebody is just, why are we doing this? This is a rehearsal. I make them do it again from the very beginning. And if somebody pushes on the fact that, why are we practicing the performance? This is a rehearsal. I tell them everything I told you in the last few minutes. I tell them you have to feel the psychology, the pressure of a performance. And then I give the pitch, the intonation, and we start, I start conducting, and they go through the songs in succession from the beginning to the end. It doesn't matter what happens, we just have to go through it from the beginning to the end. Go through it, sing it like it is sung at the performance in a way that is expected when it comes to the protocol. So it doesn't matter what happens, I will not stop. It doesn't matter if everything falls apart, I will not try to work on that at the very point of practicing like that. I will not let them talk in between songs and I will make them learn what the atmosphere is like. The logic of this is something called visualization. The idea is if you visualize the performance as a whole, starting from coming to the stage, shaking about, opening the scores, etc., then when you come to the actual performance, your body is already in a familiar state, at least in a certain percentage, the state of a performance is known, so it handles the stress and the pressure more easily. So if you have the opportunity to practice like this, I would strongly advise you to do that. Be very consistent with the communication, okay? They can't talk, they can't comment, they don't have the flexibility and the leisure of a rehearsal. That is my main, actually, advice, how to prepare your choir for the upcoming performance. To take into consideration the psychological differences when it comes to rehearsals and performances. When it comes to the thing number two, 
timing. You have to know that you will never be prepared for the performance as much as you want to be and in a way you want to be. In my experience, there are very rare cases where you feel, okay, I'm ready, especially when it comes to choirs. You always want to just run rehearsal more or something happened and you didn't have enough time and that is okay. But the way you approach this situation is to just work with what you can again you can win a match even if you're playing bad tennis it's the way you approach it in general the timing of the performance is better the more familiar they are with the performance setting the thing number three is circumstances and let me ask you a question okay so i tell you to go for a walk is it the same if you take a walk after you sat down, after you were sitting down for a while, or after you ran a sprint. Of course, it's very different to take a walk after sitting down and after running a sprint because the circumstances have changed. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the succession of the songs. The order of the choir songs you are performing at the performance. If you practice a very slow song during the rehearsal, always on its own, and then your choir during the performance has to sing it after they sung the most difficult fast-paced piece. The question is, will they sing it the same? It's about the context, it's about the situation they're put in. Singing a very slow score after you sung a very fast-paced one during the performance, if you're not used to that situation, that can affect the performance in a negative way. That brings the pressure up more. That brings the unfamiliarity of the performance even bigger. One reason more why to practice the whole performance, the whole succession of songs during the rehearsals. Because it's not the same if you sing a song individually and in a context. You don't know if you have the stamina. You don't know if they have the stamina. You don't know how your choir reacts after singing three fast songs and then have to sing a very slow one. And of course, there's many stuff to be said about how to arrange the succession of the songs, the order of the songs you will perform. And there will be a video about this coming up on the channel. But for now, just know that you can practice all of the scores during the rehearsal, but in a context of a performance, it can be very different. If you practice going through the whole program as it were for the performance, you will also learn something about your choir members when it comes to how they deal with obstacles. Not every person will react the way you want the person to react. If they're coming to a difficult place in the score that they don't feel safe enough at, some of them will attack it and fight for it and try to achieve best they can. And some singers will just go silent or really slow down or really become invisible. And you will feel that during the performance. And a very important thing about talking about performance is how they behave and how they handle when something goes badly. Do they have the tools, the mechanisms to just let it go and continue singing? Or the fact that something bad happened influences the rest of the performance because it is a very strong thing to talk about that we have to let go of, of a certain thing happening because one mistake can influence the whole performance in a very negative way and the more you learn to let it go as fast as you can and teach that to your singers and make your singers a bit more prepared the performance becomes better because i don't want to spoil it for you but mistakes will happen it doesn't matter how practiced the scores are mistakes will happen and individually every singer will make a mistake at a different point during the performance. If every singer takes it very personally and punishes themselves for making a mistake, that can influence the rest of the performance and rest of the choir sound. So again, going through the performance psychology singing during the rehearsal can benefit you. Also, if you go through it like that and you come into that situation when something happened and they didn't have a second chance, they had to push through, then they will learn that the only person that can save
save them in that situation are you, their acquired director. And if anything happens, if there is any uncertainty, if they're coming down to a place where they don't feel safe, the only person that can save them are you. And if you start to show them that during the rehearsals, then the performances will become a bit easier because you will know that they trust you and that they learned that you are the one who knows the best. And finally, the thing number five, will. The will to sing a good performance. I think you're going to be surprised the way I approach the will when it comes to performances. Of course, if you're very lucky, your choir members and the choir as a whole wants to achieve their best for the performance. We're going to do all of the things. But the problem is, if we have practiced something, I want to get 100% of the sound, of the things, of the rehearsals, of the performance I planned for. The thing that is most dangerous when it comes to performance is suddenly having people who have given 75% during the rehearsals now giving 150% during performances because they want to give it their best, give it their all. You know that feeling. This is just a rehearsal. I don't have to give all of my effort for this. I will give it at the performance. So sometimes during the performance I get a worse choir sound because that's the first time I get a realistic picture, sound picture, of what my choir members are actually capable of doing. So when it comes to the will of having a good performance, that's also something you have to train. You don't want your choir members to overcompensate or to compensate at all. You just want them to sing the way you practiced for. And that is my answer to the question how to prepare your choir for a performance. That doesn't include just practice the scores. Okay? Okay. So that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this video helpful. Let me know down below if you have any other suggestions or ideas. Thank you for being so lovely here on the channel. I'm very happy to have this place in my life. If you wish to talk to me, you can email me, you can find me on Facebook. And uh, yeah, let's keep going. Thank you for watching. Conduct well, conductors, and I'll see you next time. Bye!